What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another Game of Thrones the Card Game second edition video for you brought to you by these awesome backers of the channel who donate at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. We are at Just Games in Rochester, New York. We got myself playing Greyjoy Reigns against Matt playing Targ HRD Plaza of Pride. We are in a round four of Swiss. And it looks like I have set up a Priest of the Drowned Gods, an Iron Islands Fishmonger, and I threw a Corsair's Dirk on that Lord's Port Shipwright just to get another card in setup so I can draw an extra card, assuming he'll die pretty quick. But then I thought about it, it also helps protect him, giving him a plus two strength buff to protect him against the, um, the Targ plot that gives a minus one strength and kills everyone. And also protection against Plaza of Pride that's on the board. And some of the other Targ burn. Just kind of funny that I can use that to kind of control his locations and protect the guy. I don't plan on ever winning a challenge really with him to get the gold stolen. But uh, still good. On the other side we have a uh, Freedman, I think they are. And then a Rose Road, a Flea Bottom, and a Plaza Pride, obviously. Calm of Westeros flipped on the Targ side into Time of Plenty on my side. So card draw all around. So Matt's playing this Targaryen House of the Red Door uh, with Plaza of Pride. So right there, it kind of tells you it's focused around burn. Or at least winning power challenges and trying to uh, reduce strength of your weenies and kill them at, at the least. Starting with Plaza of Pride. Or sorry, Plaza of Punishment. I've been calling it Plaza of Pride. I'm so sorry. Plaza of Punishment is what it is. The burn one. And it looks like he's let me go first, so I'm going to start off with the Sea Tower during marshalling here. And Asha Greyjoy with a dupe to start here. Feeling good about that. I see I have an Iron Mines in hand and a Gold sitting on the board. I think that's a smart play, but... Sometimes against Targ with the burn, those saves don't really mean a lot. But Also have, of course, there's Dirk in hand, it looks like. And that may be better protection against the burn, I think. So I go that route and give her a plus two strength buff, and she can steal some gold if she wins attacking. And it looks like that's it. Spent all my gold, knelt my um, Fishmonger and my Sea Tower. So I'm all, all tapped out, and he's going to collect three gold, dupe up his Flea Bottom here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to make some funny comments about him duping up his flea bottom, and I just don't get why he's doing it against Greyjoy. I'm no, just joking. <laughs> well, let's try to have fun down there in Rochester. These guys are awesome. <laughs> so, turning ground, some reduction there on events. So, that also signals to me that. He's probably playing the Targ Burn events, and especially the expensive ones, the two cost... Uh, can't remember the name. Consumed by Flames? Consuming Flames? Whichever one it is. That seems to be a hot Targ card right now. Makes sense to have the turning grounds to back it up. And it looks like he sits on two gold and lets it go over... Looks like he's done. It looks like I'm debating the Lord's Pro Shipwright and Marshalling. I am going first, so I could Neil Plaza Punishment or the Flea Bottom. If I can lock out the flea bottom, I'm thinking of like, what can he ambush? And it looks like the Plaza Punishment is what I decide to kneel. He also doesn't have anything really to flea bottom in. And he's going to kneel his turning grounds and start challenges here to reduce the next event by one. Now my logic was there was nothing to flea bottom in, but he did save two gold. So in my head I'm thinking ambush, and I totally forgot, and I don't know if this game is the game he has it, but uh, the thing I learned about target players lately is dropping in that Quotho, being able to discard cards to just drop him into play, seeds flea bottom right off the right off the bat, 
and I wasn't thinking that way, which I probably should have known Fleet Bottom, but then again, him jumping guys in uh, and winning Power Challenge, surprisingly, could burn a guy and kill him with Plaza Punishment. So I was thinking the more, I don't mind you winning challenges, I just don't need you burning my dudes. And that's, that's the path I went there. So it looks like Osh is coming in here, I think, on the Intrigue Challenge. I'm looking to try to hit his hand. I see Kotho sitting there in his hand. He's debating jumping him out now so he doesn't lose him, which makes complete sense. And he could block the unopposed. Could stop a range trigger. I think he has enough strength for that. Asha's at 7 right now. With the Corsairs, Dirk. So he just has to block for at least 2. The Freedman can't do it on their own, so she can get the reins off there. And he's probably thinking what I can do with my range deck right now. He goes unopposed. So I steal the gold right off the bat. I'm assuming ambush, right? So it's like, let's get rid of that gold. I don't know of any one cost ambush character. There may be one, but I don't know about it. <laughs> now I have a gold. I could have played a weed or not so if I have it. I think I did. But why did I not do it? And no range trigger. And Pillage was a copy of Flea Bottom, and I draw a card using Osh's thing. I did have a Weed or Not So. Why did I not use the... Uh, I guess, yeah, Flea Bottom's duped up. No point in hitting it. But, I mean, hey, I could get the dupe off of it and then maybe get another Weed or Not So. Or something else to deal with it. Probably should have went for it. But in my mind, I'm also picturing Astapor being out there. So we'll save it for that moment. Or Plaza of Pride. So, power challenge here with the Priest of the Drowned Gods. See nobody on the board. Oh, it was a military challenge, I guess, with Asha. And there's the Weed or Not So. And that blows up the uh, Plaza of Pride's dupe. So, I do choose to use it there, interestingly. Just trying to put the pressure on, I guess. And now that he's weathered that storm... And he's going to discard cards and put in Quotho. Now he's got a gold and flea bottom standing. And a second Suns we see there now in the discard pile. And it's his challenges and I've knelt everything out. Didn't see that coming. So Quotho, five strength. That's pretty good. Pretty good for jumping in, and if you're playing reigns, you can trigger reigns with that guy alone, sneaking him in like that after your opponent's gone first. So no defenders on the Intrigue Challenge. He gets power for an oppose and grabs a Raiding the Bay of Ice. And that sucks because I'm waiting to get a Warship in play, and then I can get Flea Bottom on the top of his deck and maybe pillage it off. That was the plan there. But, uh, yeah. At least two flea bottoms are in his discard pile, so if I can deal with that other one there, uh, I'm good. So he does bring in the second sons using flea bottom. And he's going to do a power challenge with the second sons. Goes unopposed. Claim. He's up three to one. And a tie for dominance. Second Suns goes back to the discard pile. And we head to round two. Make sure you subscribe subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hit that like button. We do have more Game of Thrones coming up. There's another short championship I have. Uh, still sitting on memory cards. I have to copy that off once I get space on the hard drive from finishing off these videos. And I'll start posting those up. Also have Canadian Nationals uh, coming up in a week from the time of this recording. Uh, so I'll be able to get a bunch of videos from there. Uh, we got some great players coming up for Canadian Nationals this year. Should be a should be a 40-ish plus turnout, hopefully. 
and uh, I believe I've heard the Thompsons are coming, which is always great. I think maybe Jesse Carpenter. I'm not 100% sure on that. I've just heard some rumblings of we've got some good players coming up. Uh, and I appreciate everyone coming from out of town. I'm sure all the Michigan boys will come up again. And uh, hopefully some Rochester folks, uh, as we watch them here, will cross the border and come visit us in Toronto on, uh, I believe, March 17th, I think is the Saturday uh, tournament. I think you can still register. Uh, but we'll have content from that. And then a week after that, heading down to Millennium Games in Rochester, New York, to play in their store championship uh, and get a bunch of videos from there, hopefully. So uh, lots of Thrones content coming up on the channel is what I'm trying to get at. So make sure you subscribe and stick around for that. And right off the bat, Lord Sport Shipwright taking down Flea Bottom there. Now that the second Suns is locked and loaded in the discard pile, Iron Mines marshaled out. Looks like I played Counting Coppers, and he played a second Counting Coppers there, both loading up our hands again. Like I'm reducing a character here for three, bringing in a Priest of the Drowned God. So we got two of them out now, so they're buffing themselves and each other, so they're each four strength. And it looks like that's it. Spent all my gold again. Hopefully he leaves some behind there so I can steal some with that Corsair's Dirk on Asha. Now he only has three gold. I'm not too worried. I got Flea Bottom Nelto already. He does have a Turning Grounds though. If he wants to play some burn, he can. Looks like he has two of the uh, Dragon Is No Slaves in hand there. And a Consuming Flames. And a uh, Shadow Black Lane, so we can go hunt for more events after winning entry challenges. And it looks like that's the road he's going. Looks like he's about building up his hand here, playing the long game, drawing tons of cards, searching for the events he needs, playing two kind of coppers to start. So he just kind of weathers the early storm here and then eventually gets into his burn stuff and tries to whittle you down is what I'm assuming. And we have a Targ Loyalist on the board. I'm sure for some claim soak to try to keep Quotho alive there. And Viserys Targaryen to try to get rid of an attachment. He realizes those Cor Corsair's Dirks, uh, especially on that Lord's Port shipwright, I'm sure, are annoying. <laughs> the way he can't easily burn him. And the attachment itself is protecting from those two. Um, a dragon is no slaves he has in hand. So he's not as easily able to just burn it away. And he does save a gold. So now I gotta think, do I want to do a military with Viserys on the board? Probably not, because then he'll remove my attachment, which is my protection from his burn on Asha, is the way I look at it. So let's try to get at some of that burn, I think, and do an entry challenge here. That's what I should do. Yep. There's gonna be intrigue, stealth and quotho, makes sense. <laughs> let's try to pull out some of those juicy events. Now, looking back, I don't know what I do here with the reins if I do get a range trigger off, but uh, maybe playing the Neil plot to Neil Quotho would be good so he can't come back and win a Intrigue and get a Shadow Black Lane trigger. Even though I have the two Priests of the Drowned God, but I'll have to use them on defense. So, 
So he's going to kneel to the ground to reduce an event for sure. Is he going to try to play a burn burn card here just to stop Asha from getting the range trigger? He's going to do it on a Priest of the Drowned God. Yeah, so the Priest of the Drowned God is reduced by two, the one on, uh, closest to us there. Well, it looks like I'll mark that with a die. So he goes on opposed. I'm going for the range trigger here. Do I kneel? Do I stand? What do I do? So it looks like he played that burn card to A, get it out of his hand and in his discard pile where it's good, get it out of his hand so it doesn't get hit by the Intrigue Challenge, and spend the gold to stop it being stolen by Corsair's Dirk. Which is what I like Corsair's Dirk to do, put pressure on them to play events at uh, non-optimal times. Looks like I don't like the reins option, so I choose not to do it. Uh, <laughs> and just going to go unopposed. Get me a juicy card out of there. And uh, Daenerys Targaryen, that is a juicy card. <laughs> and a second sun spills off the top of the deck. Get out of here. <laughs> Two of them in the discard pile now, just in case. And Asha's ability is going to get to search through a bunch of cards now that the discard pile is pretty full of my opponent. And her card draw engine is in full effect here. Looks like I'm having trouble making a decision here. I don't know if I'm looking at economy cards possibly just to get them. Maybe saves, maybe characters, maybe dupes. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm trying to do here. Sometimes it's tough, especially when you start looking at like 15 cards plus and all the options in front of you. <laughs> so I finally made a decision here. So I don't know if I pass to him here now, and just trying to use those uh, Priests of the Drowned Gods on defense since they're totaling six together. Maybe he can block the Intrigue from Quotho, but he's going to do a Power Challenge, and I don't need Plaza of Pride just gobbling through a guy there, burning him to death. So I probably should block the Power Challenge. That means I'm going to have to let the Intrigue go, and he'll get a Shadow Black trigger, which is tough. But I did block and defend the power challenge. Which, uh, putting, the, putting that Priest of Drowned God there, you just heard me say it, I, I basically saved his life there from Plaza Pride by putting him in the challenge. So 
So looks like he's going on the Intrigue Challenge for five. I block with four to prevent the unopposed. He's going to trigger Shadow Black Lane. Kneeling his faction card there, searching the top ten cards, I believe, for uh, an in-faction event, I think is what it is. I could be wrong. I see a Dracarys there. He reveals it, puts it in hand. And now I'm scared. And he gets a Risen on the Intrigue pull. Man, that happens so much. <laughs> Like that card has like something on the back of it, just like take me. It says I, I don't know, but it seems even when I play against Greyjoy players, I always seem to pull Risen's out of their hand. That's why I started playing seven copies of Risen by the Sea, just so just so I always have extras. Only kidding, only kidding. I swear, I swear, I'm only kidding. <laughs> So I think I can see him holding Valor to Harris in hand there. But she's looking at the board trying to see what would be left over. I mean, his board would be untouched would be nice. But I would have to make some tough choices. And he actually doesn't. I play trade routes. He plays Nothing Burns Like the Cold to try to get rid of my Iron Mines. So it looks like I have to get rid of... Uh, one of my Corsairs, Dirks, I think, and a Iron Mines there is it's not limited location. Pretty sure is how that card works. He gets rid of Shadow Black. See, I thought it was or attachment at the time, so I was trying to make the decision between a Corsair's Dirk and the Iron Mines. And then I learned it's, it's one of each. <laughs> so which Corsair's Dirk needs to go? It's going to be the one off of the Lordsport Shipwright, not off of Asha. Which is honestly a tough choice. That Lordsport Shipwright locking down Flea Bottom is huge. He's honestly, I think, more important than keeping Asha on the board. <laughs> In this matchup. In this matchup. We'll see. We'll see if that was the right choice or not. Maybe I have another Lord's Worship right in hand that I can just play out there. I, I don't know. But then he burns away just as easy. So, I, yeah, I don't know. So, I think, yeah, he's marshalling first. Looks like he went first so that we could lose our locations, which makes my trade routes worse. So I only get five gold off of it, which is still okay. But it could, that could ruin your plans, right? When you picture a certain amount of gold based on locations and they play a location control plot. So we got Drogon marshaled out. And first action, I'm going to kneel Flea Bottom right away. No messing around. So that's three gold to work with here. See Danny in his hand. But uh, not enough to get her on the board yet. But he's got a dragon to play now with Drogon. So that with turning grounds and with some money can have a some burn impact here with playing Jakarsis and the Consumed by Flames we see there. Dragon is no slave. He can get it back at the discard pile now, winning a challenge with Drogon. He's got to save money. Usually for flea bottom, but in this case I've knelt it, so that doesn't isn't a factor during this round. But if he does leave money there, that's more for the Corsair's Dirks too, so he's gotta think about that. Which is a tough choice. <laughs> and while we're waiting for marshalling here, guys, if you are interested in the number one board game of all time right now on BoardGameGeek.com, which is a pretty big deal uh, to hit the number one spot of all time, like out of like 90,000 board games ever that are on that website, uh, it is the number one rated game of all time right now. Uh, it's a beast, but it is an awesome game. We are playing through a campaign of it right now on the channel. Uh, so you should be able to see that at Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube, and you guys can follow along. At least check out the first uh, 
episode one and two. They aren't too spoilery, but it is a legacy style game, so there are some spoilers, especially later as we go, if you don't want to be spoiled of story and, and secret characters that get unlocked and stuff like that, the character classes. Don't watch too far ahead until you've played, but uh, yeah, you should definitely check that out. It's a really awesome game. So looks like I got an Iron Mines back out there. Got a Rose Road. And now a Silence's crew. And now time to dis debate how much bestow on there. Usually it's zero, but when you're playing against the Targ Burn, every single gold token on that is just also good for protecting against the Burn. It's going to be two, so he is in eight strength right now. And I put out Asha's ship. So she's got Renown. And I believe if I discard a location or attachment using pillage, I can draw a card. So over to the target player, Matt, for his challenges. He's got three gold there, as we see. So it's too bad I didn't know he had Valor O'Harris, and it was an option. But, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. But uh, he's definitely better set up for playing it than I am, obviously, knowing that he has it. Uh, so he can easily now get rid of... That silences crew on the end of the table there uh, in the next round if he wants. So he just has to put up with it for now. But as my board gets wider and wider, that plot gets juicier and juicier for him. And you see in his hand there, something I was not expecting. He is playing Price of War. So he does have some location control of his own. Uh, so adding that burn in with some high military, he is able to just catch off guard sometimes and blow up one of your locations. So it seems like even even factions you don't normally think have location control are playing location control right now because there's so many hot locations that you might want to might want to handle. I think he's passed challenges to me here. I think that's what's happened. Which is interesting. So now I gotta run through my head why he did that, why he wanted to save those guys. So now I gotta poke in there. Looks like we want an intrigue challenge, I think, of eight. I'll put Asha in harm's way with the dragon standing. And he's going to block with Clotho, so I only am up by three. And no range trigger, I'm okay with that. I'm literally just looking to hit his hand and try to get these burn cards, but look at, look at that hand, it's huge. And Astapor in the discard pile is a good feeling. And I think it was around this point where I started to realize he's playing Shadowback Lane, uh, Turning Grounds, Flea Bottom, Plaza of uh, Punishments. And you assume Astapor, obviously Astapor, Plaza of Pride maybe. Like, how many locations that aren't economy is this guy playing his deck? He's playing more locations than a Greyjoy deck is how I start to feel. So then I start wondering, like, if he's got all the burn events or he doesn't. Because once you start playing that many locations, you got to start cutting something else. So is he playing a lot less characters than normal? Is he playing, I'm assuming, zero attachments? Um, but yeah, it starts to make me wonder, what, what type of targ deck is this here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't draw any characters, that's what I needed. Then when you see play, uh, events like Price of the War or whatever, you, you're like, wait, you have room for that and all the burn events and play that many locations? So yeah, it's definitely, definitely confusing for me. It wasn't what I was expecting. 
Um, usually just see straight up Targ Fealty, maybe Targ Crossing. But this Targ, House of the Red Door, Plaza Punishment. Very interesting, and I really liked uh, the choices made here uh, in this deck. So it looks like that was it for the round. Kind of uneventful. I didn't want to do a military to have Viserys remove that Corsair's Dirk, I guess. And he's sitting at two power. I'm at three, so still pretty far away. Still both pretty far away in the power department. Not being too risky on my side of things. He's passing his challenges. It's like we're just waiting for that breaking point to just, which whoever can, you know, survive the reset and move forward. Oh, and he has to discard for reserve. Five reserve on that plot. So he has to dump a bunch of cards there. And down to five in hand just like that. That is okay with me. And as long as I keep that flea bottom locked down, I don't have to worry about the crap in that discard pile coming into play and hurting me. And if I can prevent dragons from winning challenges, those dragon is no slave going back to hand will be harder, and he has to save gold to do that. So then he plays Valardo Harris, and I play Barring the Gates. And he's chosen me to go first, so I'll figure out my who's staying around after Velardo Harris. I'm assuming Asha is going to be one of them. And he's going to get rid of uh, Varys or Viserys, sorry, to get rid of the attachment on his. And he's saying he's being a nice guy, just showing me that's what he's going to do. So if it made my choice different, if I want to get rid of Asha. Of course, I'm not getting rid of Asha. Get out of here. <laughs> so I keep the Lordsport Shipwright uh, and the uh, Iron Islands Fishmonger. Is that Lordsport Shipwright, man? So juicy. I'd rather keep that and that weenie other than the priest, a single Priest of the Drowned God in my book. It's just doing so much work in this matchup. Now i got to build back up here. So another Rose Road will help next round with that. Six gold, a sea tower, and a fishmonger. And we're going to get Flea Bottom down here as the second action. Which, why? Hold on. Why did I kneel Flea Bottom there and blame Bar on the Gate? So I obviously brain farted here. Will I catch it? I should be kneeling Plaza Punishment. Or saving him to kneel something else that's played later. Yeah, that was, a, that was definitely a play mistake there that I look at it here. Will I catch it before I play anything else? Uh, no, it looks like I might miss it here. This Greyjoy player is horrible. <laughs> Euron's on the board, though. Feeling good about that. And I just realized, as I put my gold on the plot... Yeah, thank you. I forgot about my plot. Yeah, there, I admitted it. Yeah, I forgot forgot about my plot completely. He's okay and let me rewind that and pick a different target. But I did ask. I asked if it was okay. Matt's cool about it. I always let people take back dumb stuff like that, usually. Unless it's, like, finals of a, of a bigger tournament. But store championships, I'm not too worried about that kind of stuff. Just having fun. I always hear people bugging Matt about not playing sleeves on his cards, um, which I don't know if anyone's noticed. I never, I don't think I see any comments for it on the videos, but he, <laughs> he didn't play sleeves on his cards. I personally don't care. 
Um, but just looking at it now, definitely, definitely is great for video with uh, no glare on the cards, reflecting the light too much. Uh, so it does look nice. <laughs> Although Asha on the other side is, looks like the sun being all, all lit up there. So Rygal in here, two dragons now. See all the burn cards in his hand. Price of War, Danny, Viserys. And he's going to save two gold over to me for challenges. Still three to two here. Like uh, Matt just said, quite the good game we got going on here. But something's got to give. Something's got to give. Velardo Harris didn't really reset the board too hard. We're back kind of a little bit on parity. Maybe not. Maybe I'm still a little bit ahead with my two big dudes, but we'll see if one of them gets burned to the ground here. <laughs> two dragons, gold, turning grounds. Feels like it's coming. It's going to be a military with Euron. Nope, maybe I'm changing my mind. Yeah, it's going to be military with Euron. Thinking that if he wants to defend it, he has to play some burn plots or kneel more characters than he wants to kneel. He's going to play Dracarys. So he's two strength now. And consumed by flames for two gold. And he's burned. Wait, he did not discard two other cards. Wait a second. Where's the cards he's got to discard for that? Oh, crap. Matt, you cheater. <laughs> Do I catch it though? I don't know. I don't remember. I remember pointing it out to him one time when he played it. I just don't remember which game it was. Spoiler alert, we play each other again later. <laughs> so stay tuned for that rematch. Intrigue, still think Quotho, he has no money left. He had to spend it all and play Trading Grounds to get those cards off. But he should have two less cards now. I'm pretty sure he did not discard for that Consumed by Flames. So that sucks. And I get Viserys. And Pillage another Trading Grounds. Get to look at a whole bunch of cards here. Yeah, I think we just saw him scroll by there. I didn't see any other cards after that Consuming Flames. Or maybe it's one card. It's one card and the two gold, I think. But it's got to be a tar card. I can't remember. I should probably look that up. Maybe I'm wrong completely about the card discard. I'm sure you guys have left comments already letting me know I was completely wrong. Yep, discard another targ card from your hand to choose a participating character until the end of the phase that character gets minus three strength and is killed if its strength is zero. So yeah, even a Risen wouldn't have saved there since he got me down to down to two strength on Euron then played the Consumed by Flame, so he's down minus one, so that would only get me back to zero and he would die. So we couldn't play that. More tough decisions here as Asha's search gets bigger and bigger. Nice. 
Yeah, it looks like that's it. Over to him for challenges. Fully open here. He can do whatever he wants. And he starts off with the military for five strength with Quotho. Kills my Iron Islands Fishmonger. Or do I save? No, no save. No Iron Mines trigger there. And he comes in on the power challenge with the Targaryen Loyalist. And of course his Plaza of Punishment is knelt there, so I don't have to worry about the power challenge. And I get Dominus there since I had a gold saved on my plot. But he is now up five to five, five to four actually with the power there on Asha. So still a very tight game here, going oh so slowly. But I look across the table, I see two dragons. I see his hand getting small. Three cards. What is he going to play? He's looking at the march there. Looks like he's the march set up. I'm chucking to uh, to reserve. It looks like I throw the reader away. But is it Valor time? Is it time to kill those dragons there? Wipe his board. Save my Asha with her dupe. Use Iron Mines. If he plays Valor too, I'd have to use the save and the Iron Mines on Asha alone. Gets rid of the Targ Loyalists. Or, uh, sorry, the Shipwright. The... the Lord Support ship raise is what I'm trying to say. And it looks like little Theon in the discard pile. And there it is. Valor into March, though. Which puts me in that weird situation where I have to save Asha and save the Lord Support ship right and then march the ship right away. He knows that Shipwright has been the bane of his existence this whole game. It's the, the thing keeping me in it, I think. So now he's deciding on which order he wants to go. <laughs> and I'm pointing it out here. Well, you don't have to worry about this guy here. He's just too cost. <laughs> but Matt admits he's causing him so much problems. So Matt's got to decide whether he needs to go first and he wants to march or Valor goes off then march. I don't think it matters too much unless he's trying to get a unique character to his discard pile. He should march first. But then he's got to go first to make that decision. Now, he if uh, he does choose march first, though, I can march away the Lord's for ship right and I don't have to waste a save to keep him in play. So he's got to make sure Valor goes off first if, if he wants me to burn through more saves. He is going to go first. And choose, um, he looks at yeah, he's looking through his discard pile. His dead pile only has one character in it. That Viserys Targaryen sitting on the board for that long definitely stopped me from doing so many military challenges. And he is going to choose Valor to go off first. So they're all dead except we are going to do I have a Risen. Yeah, I'm going to attempt the Risen on the Lord's Port ship, right? Dupe off of Asha. And then March, yeah. and it keeps the Iron Mines in play for dangerous situations later. Like if I can't marshal too much here, since I played Valor, a low gold plot, I may may have trouble getting something else on the board. And uh, if I do get something on the board, I have to keep it alive. So if a double March, well, I guess he plays two double counting copper, or sorry, he plays double counting copper, so I don't have to worry about the double March at least. But I have to worry about military claim to keep Asha alive. But I guess Iron Mines can help with that. If I can marshal something decent, flip out of Valor, I can get some claim coming back at him on my challenges. I just got to weather his storm here. And he's going to play a... Storm, what is the Storm Crows, I think. So he's able to pitch a gold there and select a character and make it minus one strength, I think that's how that works. And he sits on two gold over to me for an Iron Fleet Scout. Where have you been in this matchup? What was great for those strength buffs to prevent the burn if I go first. Uh, and a great haul for my limited. 
You see, I have another Lord Support ship right in hand. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, of course. <laughs> of course, that's what I marshal. And <laughs> he says, are you kidding me? Uh, lock it down. Just keeping the pressure on in a second. Lord Support ship right. Little salt. Little salt in there. Everything I pitched, I'm not putting Theon in my pile. Oh, it sounds like uh, for taxation I was discarding little Theon and Reader because I didn't want to lose these guys. Because I knew how, how important they were in this in this board state here. Just trying to keep them for later in case one gets discarded for entry claim or something. I still have another one. So, military challenge here with the Stormcrows. Kills the Lord Sport Shipwright, who's done his job for this round already. That goes unopposed. He's up to six power. So now my challenge is time to flip out of zero claim. So I should start with an intrigue here, but the problem is Asha's got to go in for that, and then I just have the Lord's Port Shipwright stand there. So really can't do much with that. But maybe I can just st stand Asha up and get another challenge out with her. So yeah, I do do the stand plot. Makes sense. Yeah, he thought there was no claim, but there is claim actually, so he does have to. Oh, you get claim on the Yeah, because there's a reaction, oh, then by the time claim comes, yep. it's right there. Oh, so that's 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 oh yeah, okay, I know I have it. Okay. And claim that one. So grab a Jakaris on the entry claim, that's hot. And then the pillage and the card search. I mean, I like drawing the cards with Asha and all. But, uh. Man, it just slows down the game, looking through all these cards, getting your opponent to count their discard pile. <laughs> I gotta carry, like, I don't know, dice or a counter round or something and try to keep track of my opponent's discard pile, but then my opponent's gonna want to count it and may not trust my counting with my counter. So just, I don't know, it's just a slow mechanic. Um, but I did get, hit a location on the pillage there, so the Asha's uh, ship... I um, was able to draw a card for me before even the pillage effect with the the grabbing the card. And she's gonna she stood there from the the plot effect, uh, and she's gonna come in on a second challenge. And an unopposed military will kill that storm crows. And I'm gonna kneel the warship here and throw something on the top of the deck so I can pillage it off. And it's going to be Plaza of Pride. But he thinks House of the Red Door stops it, but it's not discarding. House of the Red Door only stops from discard. That's why I, I play this card. <laughs> and Matt hates this game, he says. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> and then Pillage happens. And wow, it's a location, so I get to draw a card again off of uh, the location. I don't know if I remember that or did it. And he takes Dominus, though. Uh, but I'm sitting at five, looks like eight power to seven. So I'm in the lead. And we're doing a time check here. Four minutes left. And I realize that's why I'm playing a little quicker here. I'm also the timekeeper. And I realize it's going a little slow. And he flips Valor. I flip into Rise, Rise of the Kraken. I save Asha with Iron Mines. And try to save with the Risen on the Lord's Port ship, right? Keep him in play so I can control that flea bottom. And he draws into, it looks like garbage. And I would have played Vic on the board. And now he wants to read Raiding Bay of Ice just to make sure, but we clear it up after. All right, guys, thanks a lot for that. We got more coming up here, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button if you like these Game of Thrones videos. And if you want to donate uh, and offset the cost of the work I do here and you want to throw a tip my way, Hit the link in the description below and head over onto Patreon.com. But either way, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one.